Back to our SQL store database. Here we have a simple query that joins the orders table with the customers table. And here's our join condition. You have seen several examples of this before. Now, as our queries get more complex, these join conditions get in the way. They make our queries hard to read. But the good news is that in MySQL, we have a powerful feature for simplifying these queries. If the column name is exactly the same across these two tables, we can replace the on clause with a using clause, which is simpler and shorter. Let me show you. So I'm going to comment out this line and instead type out using in parentheses, we type out the column name that is customer ID. What we have on line seven is exactly identical to what we have on line six, but it's shorter and easier to read. So let me delete this line. We can add another join statement here to join the orders with the shippers. So join with shippers using shipper ID. In both these tables, we have a column with the exact same name. All right, now let's execute this query. This is what we get. We have the order ID followed by the first name of the customer. Let's add a new column here. So I'm going to add sh dot name. That is the name of the shipper. So shipper. Now, obviously, because some of our orders are not shipped, we need to replace this inner join with a left join. So we can use the using keyword with both inner and outer joins. Let's execute the query one more time. There you go. Now we have the name of the shipper next to each order. Beautiful. However, we cannot use this technique to join the result with the order statuses table. Because in the orders table, we have this column called status. But in order statuses table, this column has a different name. It's order status ID. Let me show you. So order statuses columns. There you go. Order status ID. So the using keyword only works if the column name is exactly the same across different tables. Now, what if we have multiple columns in our join condition? For example, earlier we talked about this order items table. I told you that in this table, we have a composite primary key, which basically means a primary key that consists of multiple columns. So the combination of these two columns uniquely identify each record in this table. Now, if you want to join this table with order item notes table, in our join condition, we should compare both these columns with their corresponding columns in the order item notes table. So let's quickly write that query and then simplify it with the using keyword. So select everything from order items. Now join it with order item notes on so here we need to compare oi.orderID with oin.orderID and oi.productID equal to oin.productID. This join condition is kind of messy. It's hard to read this query. Now we can simplify this query with the using keyword. So we type out using. In parentheses, we add both columns and separate them using a comma. So order ID and product ID. Isn't that better? Now for exercise, back to our SQL invoicing database, write a query to select the payments from the payments table and produce something like this. So in this table, we have the date, the client, the amount, and the payment method. We can see on what date, who has paid, how much using what payment method. All right, I'm going to use the SQL invoicing database and then select everything from the payments table, join it with the clients table using client ID, because in both these tables, we have the client ID column. Next, we need to join this with payment methods. However, the column name between these two tables is different. So in the payments table, we have a column called payment method. But in payment methods table, our column is called payment method ID. So here we cannot use the using keyword. And we'll have to use the on clause. So on p.payment underline method equals pm.payment method ID. Now let's pick our columns. So payment.date, client.name, and we rename this as client. 
Next, we pick the amount. And finally, the payment method. So let's rename that to payment underline method and execute the query. There you go. This is what we get. The date, the client, the amount, and the payment method.